Hey everybody, Notorious here. Welcome back to my channel. In this episode, I'm going to share with you a brand new method that I came up with that will allow a climber to use a Rope Runner Pro in a three to one configuration for mechanical advantage on a limb walk. So let's get right to it. Here I have my Rope Runner Pro and this is easily my favorite mechanical climbing device. It doesn't have a lot of downsides. It has tons of upsides, but one of its downsides is that it can't be used in a three to one configuration, such as for use as mechanical advantage on a limb walk. And for those not already initiated, let me explain what I mean by that. So I'm going to just build a three to one mechanical advantage system that you would see a climber use on a limb walk. Uh, this is just one of many. By the way, I made an entire full length video about how to create mechanical advantage systems for limb walking, where I demonstrate four of the best methods. You can see that video by clicking the link in the description. I'll show you why this device can't be used that way. So first, I'm just gonna take an anchor ring and give myself a little slack. And I'm gonna grab my revolver rig by DMM. And I'm gonna create a small bite in the rope, put my ring on it and then connect my revolver rig to it. So now I have a secure connection point that is midline producible and a pulley here. And so the next step is just going to be to take the part of the rope exiting from my from the bottom of my rope runner pro and to slip it into the revolver rig. And just like that, I've created a theoretical three to one mechanical advantage system that can be used on a limb walk. Except if you own a Rope Runner Pro, the manufacturer specifically states that it cannot be used this way. Why is that? Well, the reason is because as you move back on a limb, okay, this device could potentially stay in the collapsed position like this. And if you're not minding this tail here, you could just keep going and you know lose control or plummet to the ground. So that's why you are not allowed to use this device in a configuration like this. The same thing applies for just a basic natural redirect. If you're going over a limb and you don't pull your tail over first, it'll look something like this. And again, as you are descending, this device could collapse and it could just lose control and you could plummet. Catastrophic failure and you've seen better days. So I came up with a method that so far for me has been working and which I think is safe enough to share on the internet, which allows me to use my Rope Runner Pro in a configuration like this or any other similar configuration for mechanical advantage on a limb walk. And quick disclaimer, no, the manufacturer has not said you can use it this way. 
I'm the only person I've seen anywhere on YouTube or anywhere on the internet who has proposed doing this. You do this at your own risk. I've only been using it for a short amount of time. And while I am 99% sure that it's going to be perfectly safe to use, you use this at your own risk. This is something new. This is not heavily or well tested. This is not a recommendation by the manufacturer. So if you use this, it's on you. So start low and slow and make sure you do it correctly. So what's my method for using this device safely in a theoretical three to one? It's surprisingly simple. All you need is a second bridge. And here you can see I have a second bridge and it's very short. I've shortened it quite a lot and that's because you need separation between the bottom of the device and where you place this next piece of hardware. So I'm just going to uh, take a DMM Perfecto, which is a smaller version of the Ultra O. It's the smallest full strength carabiner out there. And here I have a Rock Exotica Omniblock and it has a swivel on it, which is great because it'll help orient the pulley in its, in its ideal position. And what I'm gonna do here is clip the carabiner to my second bridge. All right, let me get my shirt out of the way and make sure you can see that. So I've clipped this carabiner with the pulley to my second bridge and make sure that you're using a bridge that's below the bridge that you're using for your device. So don't put it, don't use your device on your lower bridge, use it on your upper bridge. And by the way, this can be done with just a carabiner, but I'll explain why it's much more preferable to use a pulley um, and a carabiner. So the next step is to take the portion here, this bite that is exiting from below my Rope Runner Pro, and I'm going to open my OmniBlock and feed that bite into it. And now we've got the same three to one system, except it's extended below my Rope Runner Pro, okay? And why is that important? Well, let me demonstrate. Now, when you move back on a limb to do your limb walk, the pulley below the device is going to keep this part of the rope completely straight. So, as far as the rope runner is concerned, the rope is not bent below it. It's as if you're just on a straight piece of rope, all right? And when I let go, it will lock. That same risk of it collapsing simply doesn't exist. Let me also explain that you must have at least three or more inches of separation between the bottom of your Rope Runner Pro and your pulley. The greater the separation, the safer this system will be. If you have these two items too close together, 
then it's just gonna defeat the purpose and it's not gonna run smoothly and you still run the risk of it collapsing. So when I wanna go in on my limb walk, um, if I were using a carabiner, and I'll try and keep my hands out of the way, you can see that it's just ascending my device for me. If I were just using a carabiner, this would be super low friction, and it would also be preventing you from having access to the pulley that's on the Rope Runner Pro. All right, so in order to keep that same mechanical advantage and smoothness, a pulley is so much better. But it will work with a carabiner. It will work. And one, one way that using a carabiner isn't gonna mess with anything is if you are doing like a redirect that requires you to create sort of a three to one for retrieval, then all you're gonna be doing is descending on it. So in that situation, the carabiner is just fine because you don't ever have to pull this back in and um, actually use it for mechanical advantage. But it'll keep, you know, the, the rope below the rope runner nice and straight as you descend and ensure that it doesn't collapse on you. So watch, I'm moving in and this is nicely and smoothly advancing my Rope Runner Pro. And then as soon as I release and move back, it will first line the rope up and make it nice and straight. And then my device, which as far as the device is concerned, it thinks it's on a completely straight piece of rope. It will then spread out every single time the way it should. No risk of collapse. The only downside that I can think of for this system, and so again, if you wanna move back, keeps everything neatly lined up so that your device won't collapse. Once I let go, grabs readily. And the only setback, no pun intended, is that when you go to, you know, move in on a limb, there is more setback or sit back, which is it? Let me know in the comments section, I've heard both. Um, I've been using setback because it sets you back a little bit, but it might be sit back because it makes you sit back more. But watch, as I let go, before the device will engage, because of that pulley, it's going to have this setback. So it's got more setback, but really it's pretty negligible. Um, we're talking like three inches here of, you know, just extra setback. And I really, it doesn't bother me one bit. And just being able to use my Rope Runner Pro on a limb walk in a theoretical three to one configuration is just so awesome. That, my friends, is something that I came up with just, you know, a month or so ago. And I really wanted to share it with my community and with the tree climbing world. So if you try this out, let me know what you think. Again, this is a brand new thing. It's been tested by one person um, one very smart, um, not to toot my own horn, but I know a lot and I experienced. And so as far as my understanding of the mechanics here and the, you know, the physics, this should make using a Rope Runner Pro in a three to one configuration perfectly safe. Okay. But keep my disclaimer from earlier on in mind. All right, thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, hit that like button. Please be sure to subscribe, hit all so that you get notifications as soon as my new videos drop. 
And as always, be sure to check out my channel for more hitch how-tos, knot tutorials, and climbing videos. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.